The Yongle and Xuan period in the early Ming Dynasty are very important, very critical in the history of uh, Chinese porcelain development. The, the purpose of forming this collection was always to further the knowledge of Chinese porcelain. The difference between the Yongle and Xuan period um, is quite subtle. The pieces that we're offering this time come from the very um, re celebrated Tian Milo collection that was formed by Mr. Gu Shichiao, S.C. Ko. This is a collector who had a great passion for porcelain and try and charter the developments uh, of Chinese porcelain since the, the, the kilns in Jinjinun were set up in the 14th century and focusing from the 14th to the 18th century, mostly on blue and white porcelain. The, the purpose of forming this collection was always to further the knowledge of Chinese porcelain. And that's also something that uh, he did through the publication of this beautiful two-volume catalog in 1987 uh, to go with this exhibition at the Hong Kong Museum of Art. And it's still today one of the great Bibles on the subject of Chinese porcelain. One of the main stars of the auction is this basin. This type of basin um, finds its source in Middle Eastern metalwork, um, such as that it was produced in, 12th, in the 12th and 13th century uh, in Egypt and Syria. You'll find these brass examples that have been used together with uh, ewers to wash your hands before and after a meal. It's not a ceramic shape. It's not a shape that was born on a potter's wheel. You can see the strong angle. And in terms of the design, if you look at the interior, that sort of um, geometric kind of star on the inside is something, again a design that finds its source, its origin in Middle Eastern metalwork, but is not actually found exactly um, like this. Now that's a unique example that comes with a border of pinks at the rim, and what you see usually it's a border of waves on most other examples. It's a, it's a very beautiful border. You also have these beautiful little half florets circling uh, the base here, again, a unique design. The ball that we have here is a very typical production of the Shrena period. You find these dice balls with a variety of designs from um, uh, peony flowers, mixed flowers, you find them with the Three Friends of Winter. You have another example that comes with lotus flowers and the eight uh, Buddhist emblems. That is a design that comes from Buddhism originally and you will have seen in, in sort of stone carvings. So by the time that you find it on porcelain in the Ming Dynasty, actually the design uh, bears very little resemblance to the flower. I mean you call them dice balls, this is really a connoisseur's term, um, but in fact they may have been used either for dice or for cricket fights or just for sort of multifunctional use, it's quite hard to, to know exactly how they were used. The blue here, it's got that quite punchy quality already. The painter has used to great effect the heaping and piling effect. That is one that you find with that Sumali uh, cobalt that appears during the period um, and gives this very contrasty effect on the flowers that collectors um, from the late Ming Dynasty onwards that were found extremely interesting and pleasing. Now there's a very classic uh, Schrenner mark on the rim here. The use of an imperial mark was standardized from that period onwards throughout the rest of um, China's imperial history. The difference between the Yongle and Schrenner period um, is quite subtle. You know, had I not seen the mark, I would have thought is quite typically late Yongle. You can see that border of little florets. The blue is not quite as powerful as you'd uh, necessarily expect it from the pier. It's got that soft hue. It's a little bit paler. It's got that heaping and piling comes in sort of very little black little spots here that heightens the design. The classic scroll here, very fluid. I'd say again, is something that you um, usually know from the Yongle period and of course um, you know when you have a, a change of regime, a change of reign, the Yongle to the Shrenda period, it is the very same painters using the same materials 
will work from one period into the next. That explains why the two periods um, can be very similar. The Yongle and Xuanle period in the early Ming Dynasty are very important, very critical in the history of uh, Chinese porcelain development. It's so a period of great standardization and uh, great quality control. And it's a period of uh, great creativity as well when a lot of the designs and shapes that will inform um, the, the, the development of porcelain uh, throughout the Ming Dynasty and throughout the Qing Dynasty first make their appearance. If you look at blue and white porcelain of the Qing Dynasty or even family rose porcelain, if you look at the shapes and the designs, most of them have their source in uh, Yonglen Xuan the period porcelain.